Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. I finally have some time on a weekend to get to this project that's been waiting for at least a year. So my 2002 Suzuki XL7, trusty reliable, this is my main mobile diagnostics truck. It needs a clutch. What, you know, what was the history? So I bought this thing in 2011 it had 80,000 miles on it. Uh, right off the bat, I, you know, the clutch seemed really tight, like the pedal was just hard to push. I'm like, yeah, maybe that's the way it is. But the, the main problem was it wasn't disengaging all the way. The gears would still kind of grind. You had to, you know, it wasn't really enjoyable to drive that way. So the first thing I did when I bought it was I adjusted the clutch travel at the pedal. So basically, the layout here is, here's the clutch pedal, and then it links to the uh, master cylinder right here, so it pushes on the master cylinder through this little rod. So there's some adjustments that you can make. You can extend the rod a little bit. There's a lock nut on here. I screwed it all the way out and it got better. Uh, I drove it around, you know, for a few years, maybe like four or five years, and then the same thing started to get worse and worse. That it wouldn't disengage all the way. So there's another adjustment you can make. The clutch pedal uh, stop right up here. So you can unscrew the, the stop nut to lift the pedal up further so then your actual travel will be greater. You can see, you can see it's higher up than the brake pedal right now. Okay, so again, that helped. Now I can have a longer travel so the slave cylinder and the transmission can go further, push the shift fork and it'll push on the release bearing and release the clutch better. That worked. Fine. Now, again, it's getting hard to disengage, and we're at the limit of all the travels. <laughs> you know, the pedals raised all the way up, the rods all extended all the way. I even put some spacers in there. So, like, something is going wrong. I just got to do it. It needs to be reliable. Uh, I don't want something to, to break at the worst moment. It's been giving me plenty of warning. It has 166,000 miles now, so that's uh, what? bought it when it was 80 so I went 85,000 miles with the clutch kind of getting a little worse and worse it's not slipping it's just that disengagement so finally decided to tackle the job got to get it ready for the winter we need four-wheel drive around here I'll show you what parts I got I got this from Rock Auto Check Arnley clutch set and I made sure that made in Japan <clears throat> that is absolutely key I want the highest quality components <clears throat> installed in my own vehicle so got some instructions let's look at the parts boom it's an Exidy pressure plate made in Japan awesome I like it and the uh, actual clutch disc is also Exidy, made in Japan. So, I don't know if that's the OEM manufacturer, but, you know, it's components, I trust that brand. So, happy with that. Now, what other parts are included? So, there's a release bearing and a pilot bearing. The pilot bearing doesn't say made in Japan so but we'll see what the original one feels like and if it needs a new one we'll pop this guy in I'm not too worried about a pilot bearing it's not like a high stress item but still you want some high quality components the release bearing again I wasn't sure where what's the country of origin here that's what it looks like 
So I went ahead and ordered a brand new OEM Suzuki made in Japan release bearing just to have one just in case this one wasn't up to par. Here's what this guy looks like. So I guess it looks very 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 similar. This one actually has grease on it which is cool. And this one says Japan NTN. This one doesn't say anything. So we're putting in obviously the OEM release bearing. So that's almost it. Then I got again Suzuki OEM release fork. So how this works is the slave cylinder pushes on this end. There's a pivot right here and then that levers the release bearing that way and that pushes on you know the diaphragm and the whole thing disengages the clutch and just I ordered this because on forums I read hey you know this is a kind of a high wear item on Suzuki's and considering how hard it is to push the clutch you know that this part is under a lot of stress and how many cycles it's gone through so we got a new one just in case and you know, we'll have it if we need it. So the key here is preparation. So that's, those are all the components that I got, plus a couple of exhaust gaskets. And basically, you know, I'm not going to videotape six hours of clutch replacement. We'll just kind of do the, the highlights here. So here's where we are so far. Made a little working room, air box, and the battery took out. No big deal. And the hardest part so far was getting this exhaust Y pipe off. So the studs from the manifolds and converters go into here. And the nuts were really seized on those studs. So torch, break them by hand, kind of go back and forth, and then get an impact to rattle them off and they all came off luckily so that is off again we'll need new gaskets for here and the flange and the flanges on this thing are kind of in sad shape <laughs> this is a modification it's just a big steel plate that I drilled holes in because there's nothing left of this flange on the white pipe flange on the converter is looking a little sad but at least it can still hold there. Again, it's the crumbling away. So when they make these things out of stainless steel, why can't all the flanges be like this? Look, it looks brand new because it's stainless. But some of the flanges are not. So you have to wonder why they make some of them stainless and some of them regular crappy metal. Uh, got the rear drive shaft off. And... Let me show you what's going on up front. All right, here we go. Under the XL7. So that's the piece, the exhaust that, oh, I, that I took off. That includes the second cat and the primary cats are up there, part of the exhaust manifold. So these guys right here, you can see the nuts were really rusted on there. The ends of the studs are crumbled away, but otherwise they look in pretty decent shape. So um, you know that's good we can reuse that uh, next I the sway bar it just hooks on to these spots right here you undo those and it just swings down so you don't need to disconnect the links or anything it's out of the way and we can keep going peeling back the onion front drive shaft I disconnected from the front diff and this model drive shafts just slip into the transfer case you know right into the seal so if you take the front drive shaft off here all of the fluid out of the transfer case will just pour out so they recommend leaving the front drive shaft connected here and just taking it off as an assembly with the whole transmission so that's what we're going to try to do um, 
but otherwise it's looking pretty accessible now this cross member comes off with the transmission mount and it's four bolts on each side and I already broke them free they're not too bad it's not like a Ford Explorer where all the bolts start crumbling off uh, or breaking off <laughs> so four and four and then so here's our fork the one that you know I got a new one and the sleeve cylinder bolts right to here I already got it kind of out of the way it's sitting kind of tucked away up there <clears throat> but I was looking into this and I think we see the root cause of the problem see if you look into the bell housing there's the pivot that the fork rides on so you can see that and if you move this fork away that pivot is almost going right through the fork see how it like notches in there so it's definitely where the pivot rides that hole is way it's like hollowed out compared to the new fork it's almost eating through it so I think that's the main problem here is this fork is just getting pushed further and further and further back so the slave cylinder had to go you know the travel had to be greater and greater and that was causing our release issues but anyways you know we're getting all new components in there shouldn't be yeah, should be a big improvement the starter lives right here and I think all the bolts are from this side so we have this bracket for the cat take that off two bolts for the starter and then I think you know this big bolt right here that's one of the main bell housing bolts and same now this one is threaded from the back side it might be a little tricky to access there's another big one right there next to the oxygen sensor but overall it should be in decent shape Ugh. and you know when the engine pivots down there isn't much room here against the firewall I'm trying to see if there's gonna be any interference and there's at least yeah, maybe a couple inches but as a precaution I undid the evap you know purge solenoid and kind of moved that out of the way because if that thing started going back and hit goodbye purge solenoid so that's safely out of the way and hopefully we'll have enough working room but that's it so far oh, here's the slave cylinder so it's a uh, spring loaded you actually hear the hydraulic fluid going in and out bleed nipple so this thing if you don't open it up you don't need to bleed anything out so it's just here on a hose mounts to the side of the transmission bell housing inside oh. remove the uh, consoles so we have our transfer lever and our main shift lever pull the boots up and here we have to take the levers out of the transmission so this little ring just comes off and the boot slides up it's like a you know primary and secondary boots and once that comes out then there's a little trick to get these levers out of the transmission itself same thing on the transfer case boot comes up you can see a little grease in there so let's read how to get these levers out and keep on moving so luckily I have the OEM repair manual PDF of it and here's how to remove the levers so remove the console box remove boot clamp and then remove boot number one from transmission shift lever case here's the the key with gear shift control case cover push down with fingers turn it 
to counterclockwise and take out shift control lever. Interesting. So you push that little ring down, then you turn the whole lever counterclockwise, and it should pop right out. Take out transfer shift control lever in a similar manner as described above. So let's give that a shot and get these levers out of here. Oh, the actual knob turns, not the shaft. So you push it down. There we go, sweet. So we'll leave this in neutral. Four low, but that's pretty cool. So it comes out just like that, and we should probably mark forward and back. But we have this little screw hole on the back side, which you can't really mess that up. And I definitely want to put these in a bag so the contamination stays to a minimum and plug these holes with a piece of paper towel. So we're just going to stuff some paper towel right in here to prevent any dirt from falling in. And as you can see, there's mud everywhere covering everything. And that is because back in my younger days when just got this thing, I'm like, all right, four wheel drive, let's take it to a four by four off-road festival with like lifted Jeeps and crazy stuff and they had mud holes that were deeper than I expected so you go into this mud hole and then the mud came up over the hood like over the windshield so the whole car submerged in mud so mud got everywhere I mean it was pretty bad like it's not good for your vehicle they got into the belts, I had to replace belts, the alternator is all stuffed with mud, the radiator got clogged, it started overheating, so I mean it survived, and I went through the mud hole more than once because it was kind of fun, but wouldn't recommend that, and everything fills with mud, your frame rails, your, <laughs> like, and then it just stays there, you can't possibly flush out, so the, the this car is going to be full of mud for the rest of its life. But I guess it is what it is. Life learning experiences. That's what four wheel drives are for, right? <laughs> There's the tr transmission shaft. I don't know why there's a little rust under there. So I think you can see the shift lever, the cam actually goes forward. And again, we'll put some paper towels in there and go from there. All right, well, I did as much as I could in terms of removing some of the lower <clears throat> bell housing bolts, and the starter is loose. Push back a little bit the drive shaft. I just tied up with a bungee, so it's going to stay with the transmission. Now we have a jack supporting the cross member right under the actual transmission mount, and now. Let's remove this cross member. Four bolts over there came out decently well. Let's see how these guys do over here. All right, one. <laughs> wow, too easy. Don't cut your chickens yet. It's always like the last bolt that gives you trouble. That's two. Three. And finally. Okay, the cross member is loose and coming down. Now let's see what happens when we lower the jack ever so slightly. Pause it there. Gonna regroup. This cross number is kind of a 
pain in the butt because here it bolts you know through the cross member to the frame and on the other side it's through the frame to the cross member so it's kind of like still hanging on to that lip over there but looks like it moves and if we move it sideways see the path of least resistance well as always this is the tricky part especially if you're working on the floor two floor jacks supporting the transmission I actually put a ratchet strap around this guy to keep the transmission more secure and now all we got to do is do a little wiggle wiggle and hopefully this thing will slide out it did separate already so now it's a matter of moving this whole piece back oh no hmm definitely do, don't want to do this every day your neck starts hurting and it's gonna be, <laughs> gonna be pretty sore tomorrow okay it's separated I think we're in pretty good shape now what I want to do is you know it's tipping a little bit I wonder if we can lower it while holding it up. Now we're going to lower the second jack here. And let's double check that nothing is attached. So there's a vent tube right here that's just um, hanging out. Not attached to the body of the car. down through our holes here looks good looks good the wires are out of the way not too many wires the manual so there's like a four-wheel drive switch and the reverse switch we'll keep lowering the guy from here That's pretty cool. I'm gonna alternate it so it lowers evenly. Okay, that's all the way down. And that's as far down as we can go there. Awesome.
Well, there's the clutch. It is all in mud. 20405. Wonder if it's ever been replaced. Well, I gotta get the transmission moved out of the way and get the pressure plate off and see what's going on with our throw out bearing and fork. But you know, it still spins. There's input shaft. Oh man, see what the mud did? Got in everywhere. <laughs> this is all full of mud. Imagine mud all around. Not a good scenario.